Hello, I am Michael Collins and this is Media Focus. Take a look at the image on the screen. What is it of? What is he likely to say? So probably jumping into your head right now, this is a newspaper boy or a newspaper sales boy. And what is he saying? Well, he's probably saying something along the lines of extra, extra, read all about it. He's a little kid and he's probably talking in a Cockney accent as well. He's holding out the newspaper and maybe the main character takes it at this stage. However, think really, really hard. Have we ever seen this boy before? Can you think of a single film where this happens? You're currently racking your brain. You're currently thinking back through every film that you've ever seen. And you're desperately thinking, have I ever seen this boy? Have I ever seen this character? I know exactly what he looks like. I know exactly what he sounds like. And yet I can't actually place him within my mind. And I thought long and hard about this. And probably, yeah, okay, there's lots of films I can think about where, yeah, there might be a newspaper boy. I can definitely recall somebody in a 1940s American film noir at one stage saying, give me that, and then taking the newspaper off of him. But I've no idea what film this is from. How did we know who he was then? If we've absolutely no recollection of who he was, where is this idea coming from? We're starting to get quite philosophical at this stage. And what we've just seen is an example of what we call hyper reality. We can also attribute the term simulacrum to, the, to this as well, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So hyperreality is this absolutely fascinating term in media studies, and we can at least in part attribute it to the French sociologist and philosopher Jean Baudrillard. This term refers to the idea that representations within media products are more real than that which they represent. So when we watch a media product and we see representations, Baudrillard argues that actually the representations that we see within these media products actually mean more to us and are more meaningful and are more real than that that they represent. Sometimes these representations are repeated so often that we end up with a simulacrum. Now, in philosophy, a simulacrum is initially an object which looks like another object. So, for example, if you ever look at a tree and you see a face in the tree or something that looks like a face, well, that's an example of a simulacrum. But it's not actually a face at all. It's you who's put the face in there because you are a human and you are essentially designed to see faces in things. A simulacrum in media studies is something which refers to a representation of something which no longer exists, or perhaps even something which never existed in the first place. And this is something that we see over and over again in media products. If you've ever seen any straight to Netflix films, which are set in some nice little town, for example, where everybody knows each other and everybody knows each other's names and they all go and hang out at the milkshake bar. Well, this is an excellent example of a simulacrum. This just absolutely does not happen. Teenagers in general lives tend to spend most of their time uh, hanging out at home or other places. And I'm pretty sure you generally don't tend to hang out at milkshake bars. However, in films and television shows, we expect different things to everyday life. So we have this concept of hyper-reality. We see characters in films and TV shows who are very different. We call these hyper real representations, and they are much, much better than reality. So what we're seeing here is a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, and yeah, I could keep going, but I'm not going to keep going. So obviously, this is a fairly tricky idea to get your head around, but let's just leave it at this idea of hyperreality is a representation which is more real than that which is being represented. So John Baudrillard is our key 
theory number five. And all of these come under the general idea of postmodernism. And if you want to look at more postmodernism, just check out the video on postmodernism, which I've already published. So here is a quote from Jean Baudrillard. And I think this is from his essay, uh, Simulation, Simulation Simulacrum, but probably wrong there. It is no longer a question of imitation, nor duplication, nor even parody. It is a question of substituting the signs of the real for the real. Now, we've looked quite a lot at representation in media studies. And the whole point of representations is that they are not real. Every time we watch a film or a TV show or a music video or even a news broadcast, we are seeing representations. Representations are always presented by the producer, and representations always reflect the dominant ideological values of the producer as well. But for Baudrillard, this goes even further. This isn't an idea of imitation. This isn't the producer attempting to imitate that which he or she has seen in everyday life. This is the idea of replacing the real, the things that we experience in everyday life, with another reality, something which is actually even more real, hyper-reality. So, how can we apply this concept to the video for Formation by Beyoncé? Well, just a couple of examples on this slide here. On the top left here, we have a contemporary image, quite clearly not from the 1800s, of two women in antebellum dresses. These dresses have many connotations. For one thing, they're obviously extravagant and beautiful. They're old-fashioned and they link back to American history. But they also have con a symbolic connotations of racism and slavery. They were typically owned by the wives and daughters of wealthy slave owners in America. This is a, an artifact which we often see in the music video to Formation by Beyonce. And being taken out of context like this, they are represented in a hyper real sense. By representing them again, they become better than they were initially, and they take on a new value by being placed into a new context. On the top right, we have an actual image of from the 1800s of black slaves picking cotton in America. Uh, if we look carefully at their costume as well, we'll see that the checker pattern and headdresses there are also utilized by Beyonce in this video, suggesting that not only is she taking on the powerful role of a slave owner, but she is also taking on the vulnerable role of a black slave in the antebellum era of America as well. Once more, this is a hyper-real representation. By being taken out of context, it now moves beyond its initial meaning and now presents a completely new meaning, not one of subservience and vulnerability, but instead a new meaning, one of power and one of Beyonce taking this concept and then placing it into a new and powerful position. In the bottom left, we have a news image on the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. So we see two people wheeling two children in a shopping trolley through the floodwater. Once more, the music video to Formation utilises the iconography from the Hurricane Katrina disaster, which is quite clearly a completely different era to the antebellum era, which has been set out as well. So instead of an image, or perhaps as well as being an image of poverty and de deprivation, it is now recontextualized completely differently as an interesting and exciting image which contributes to the overall sense of the music video. On the bottom right, we have a contemporary cartoon of a black slave uprising with black slaves attacking their white slave owners. This cartoon here was presented and was extremely negative of this event and presents black slaves as being violent and aggressive while the slave owners are now presented as being vulnerable. This idea of a black fight back against white power is also presented in the music video to Formation, most notably in the parting shots of the black child with the hood up 
standing up to the police. And this is really reinforces this binary opposition between the initially vulnerable black child who then takes on this whole new level of power when the police drop their weapons and lift their hands as if in surrender as well. So to what extent does the video to formation present a hyper real bricolage of meaning to the audience? So what the hell does that mean? Well, hyperreality is a representation which is better than the real thing. And by taking these different contexts, Beyonce is now forcing the audience to view them in a completely new light. She is recontextualizing the dress of the white slave owners and then taking ownership of it, taking its idea of power and racial hierarchies and completely flipping that on its head. This idea of bricolage is also really important. Bricolage is a French term, meaning the combination of different media elements, i.e. just chucking stuff together. Think a bric-a-brac sale, so lots and lots of different things. So bricolage is most obviously seen in the video to formation by the fact it keeps switching between different time eras. So we have the antebellum era, we have the modern era, but even in the final shot where Beyonce falls into the floodwaters of Hurricane Katrina, she's still wearing a costume which is reminiscent of the 1970s. And we can also argue through looking at the top right image that her costume is actually reminiscent of a costume worn by black slaves in the antebellum era. Through the combination of all these different elements, this idea of reality is completely subverted and an exciting and challenging hyper-reality is presented to the audience. So why? Why is it that the video to formation presents this hyper-real bricolage? Well, one, it looks cool and interesting. By combining all these different eras, it gives Beyonce an opportunity to wear lots of different costumes, which is clearly exciting for the audience. But this goes beyond this as well. By recontextualizing the different elements, for example, mise-en-scene and costume, this allows Beyonce to take control of these different elements and to present a very rich and very important ideological perspective to her young black target audience. It also allows her to educate the secondary audiences to this video, and it allows her to deal with an extremely problematic issue, that of black slavery and its implications even in mod modern America in a three and a half minute long pop song.